everyone and welcome to my morning report charts appraisers on Thursday 27th of April with me Rich Pro Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. We've got a bit of a corrective outlook actually forming on these equity markets and um, that's come on the back of this tax plan that was announced by the Trump administration yesterday um, and that tax plan seemed to just be a little bit disappointing really. I mean the, it didn't really give a great deal of information. Um, I think it's Probably specifically the um, lack of detail uh, with regard to the um, repatriation of overseas assets, um, or sorry, overseas earnings, without a, um, a suggestion of what that tax rate would be. Also, 15% corporation tax. Will the Republicans let that go through? Um, in the fact, with with regard to the debt ceiling, because um, it doesn't seem as though this tax plan is revenue um, neutral. Or budget neutral, um, which would subsequently raise the debt ceiling. So you'd see this sort of fiscal conservatives in the states kicking up a bit of a stink with that in mind. Um, so there's question marks, and the question marks have led to a bit of a, a sort of a, an inch day decline on the S&P 500. Subsequently, we're seeing European equity markets coming lower. We're also seeing the dollar coming back under a little bit of pressure, not too much on that dollar index, but you can see these treasury yields, which are just sort of towards the low of the day today on the 10-year and the two-year falling away. So it just suggests that there's a little bit of um, a sort of a corrective outlook on equities, corrective outlook on the dollar, and um, that's pretty much what we're seeing today. Um, we've got the ECB today, um, and there's no change expected on rates. However, um, sort of speculation that perhaps something could be mentioned with regard to tapering, because you've seen a, an increase or an improvement in um, the economic data through the Eurozone in the um, last sort of few weeks really, a couple of months um, since March really. and um, that might lead to some on the Eurozone um, governing council, sorry, on the ECB governing council to sort of try and sort of look towards tapering. I think it's a little bit early because we've still got the uncertainty of the French election um, but today it's possible um, that uh, there could be some sort of mention of it but still I don't think it's all that likely um, yet. So um, that's pretty much the sort of big focus of today. You've got a little bit of German inflation at 1 o'clock or throughout the morning you get the uh, German inflation numbers announced. Um, sorry, this is the wrong page. Throughout the morning you get the German inflation numbers announced. We've also had overnight the uh, Bank of Japan, which is impacted on the, uh, on the yen today. The Bank of Japan held rates as was um, before uh, at uh, 0 0.1% percent negative um, but they sort of f um, did a tweak to the forecast slightly upgrading or revising higher the growth forecast to 1.6 percent for this year this fiscal year but downside revising the inflation and um, saying that they're unlikely to hit that inflation target by 2018 of 2% so the market's taken that a bit uh, yen negative and um, the yen's been sold off, and the yen is the underperforming FX major today. So um, that's uh, pretty much um, the market outlook. Uh, let me just uh, show you a few more of the economic data points today. As I said, German inflation um, at one o'clock. Where is it? Here, yeah. one point nine percent up from one point from one point six. That sort of can be a bit decent harbinger for uh, eurozone inflations tomorrow. The flash eurozone data. Uh, X transport durable goods is expected to grow by 0.4% on the month again and then into the afternoon we get the uh, jobless claims 245 basically bang in line uh, with last week and also their pending home sales 1% negative now this is also interesting the Kansas City uh, Fed composite 20 was the last reading and as I said uh, earlier this week these um, Fed num Fed um, surveys are just beginning to tail off and the Kansas City Fed again if that sort of starts to fall away would be interesting because that again would be reflective of sort of a small deterioration in US data so that takes me to my chance today which is the sterling Aussie now very interesting chart is the sterling Aussie because it's been moving higher and um, I sort of focused on this weeks back with this um, threat the broken up uh, broken downtrend we've now sort of moved shot higher uh, last week on the announcement of the um, election in the UK but subsequently we're flagging higher and we're now flagging through that 7205 resistance that was the key sort of December January highs 
and it now reopens the top of this sort of trading range really doesn't it 178 now that flag implies uh, 174.30 there or thereabouts and I think it's um, it's well on the way to doing so I mean you look at this momentum is very strong on this uh, sterling Aussie it suggests that uh, little corrections are a chance to buy you to look on the hourly chart if it comes through look on the hourly chart you can see the breakout again this morning above 72.20 um, so it's, you get a closing break about 172.05 and I think that's up and up and away so you'd see this uh, consolidation being a base of support initially you could argue 71.70 but then you've got 71.10 71.11 being this breakout level and that is your key sort of basis of support near term you'd argue um, which was this breakout here so uh, yeah some strong some strong gains being seen on the uh, sterling Aussie and it looks like we're sort of continuing to push higher so a decent one to look at there so I wish you good luck in your trading today and I'll speak